We've all seen zombie movies, and they can be terrifying. It's a good thing they don't exist, right? But what if I told you they are real? The only thing is, they're not what you might expect. From a parasite that can control minds, to a virus that turns you into an aggressive zombie, here are 15 things that turn animals into zombies. Number 15. Horsehair Worm Horsehair worms might look like a hair on the move, but in reality, they are a parasitic animal, and quite a dangerous one if you're a cricket. Their life begins as eggs in a river, where they wait to be eaten by a mayfly larva that also lives in the river. So far, so good, but the story gets a little crazy after that. The hair worm egg doesn't die when it gets eaten. It simply hatches and curls up, waiting inside the mayfly's flesh. It sits tight until the mayfly becomes fully grown and heads towards dry land, where there's a very good chance it will get eaten by a cricket. But boy, is the cricket in for a horrible nightmare. The horsehair larva then eats up the cricket's stored fat for an entire month until it becomes a horsehair worm. And it gets worse. The worm can literally send toxins into the cricket's brain so it'll go look for a body of water, something it would never do on its own because crickets are not good swimmers and they would probably drown. But once the cricket gets compelled by the worm and they reach the water, the worm then proceeds to exit the poor cricket through its butt. The curious part of this is that the cricket doesn't die once the worm is outside. It simply hops away to safety. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Emerald Cockroach Wasp this beautiful wasp is very unique and in a way absolutely terrifying it is able to create zombies literally her preferred species for zombification are the poor cockroaches so how does the wasp do it well she approaches her victim which by the way is extremely bigger than her and bites them twice the first bite completely disables the roach's front legs so it can't escape but the second bite delivers venom straight into the defenseless cockroach's brain but amazingly these two bites don't kill the roach it doesn't even harm or paralyze it what it does is suppresses its escape reflex meaning it won't don't try to run away if you kill it. While the venom starts taking effect, the roach will groom herself in a compulsive and disturbing way while the wasp waits nearby. After a while, the wasp comes back and she severs the roach's antenna to taste its blood and determine if she needs to inflict another dose of venom. It has to be the perfect quantity. Too little and the roach can come to her senses, but if there's too much venom, it'll die. And who needs a dead zombie? The wasp then guides the zombified roach to her lair, where she will lay her egg on top of it, and she will bury both the roach and the egg alive. When the egg hatches, it will proceed to eat the stupefied roach, eating non-essential organs first so it stays alive for longer. Number 13. Ophiofungus did you know a mushroom can zombify an animal? Yeah, really. Introducing the Ophiofungus. These fungi attack ants. Starting out as a mere spore, they fall from a tree, landing on the exoskeleton of their prey. At this stage, the spore releases an enzyme that can dissolve a spot on the exoskeleton, prompting an actual explosion within the body of the ant. At this point, there's no going back for that poor ant. The spore wriggles in and then begins to replicate, growing within the tissue of the ant, eventually making up almost half the body weight of the poor bug. At this stage, the Ophiofungus has reduced the poor ant to a husk of its former self. A zombie, if you will, that the fungi have complete and total control over. Yikes. Number 12. Toxoplasma gondii. 
We all know that rats and cats don't get along, and if a rodent catches the scent of a feline, it will likely run for its life as far as possible. But there's a parasite that can change all that. The parasite starts its life, ironically, inside the cat. So it's the cat that is infected, not the rat. But what happens next will blow your mind away. When an infected cat defecates, inside the fecal matter are Toxoplasma gondii eggs. And as we all know, rats will eat, well, absolutely everything and anything, even cat poo. So when the rat becomes infected, what the parasite does is it releases toxins into its system that'll somewhat control the rat's behavior, suppressing its aversion to a cat's scent. And as you can imagine, if the rat doesn't instantly run to safety when it finds itself in the vicinity of a cat, guess what? They become extremely more vulnerable and easy for the cat to hunt them. And so the cycle starts again. When the cat eats an infected rodent, it will again defecate some Toxoplasma gondii eggs, infecting yet another rat, and so on and so on. It's an impressive symbiotic relationship between the parasite and the cat, because Toxoplasmas can only reproduce inside a cat's gut, and the cats probably appreciate a little help in hunting the elusive rats. Number 11. Parasitic Wasp Let's be honest, being a parent is a lot of work. That's why we have babysitters. But what this wasp does with its young is beyond anything you could ever imagine. The wasp in question is a parasitic one, and it attaches her egg on the abdomen of an unsuspecting spider. When the egg hatches, the wasp larva sticks to the spider's back, and the zombification starts. Scientists believe the larva controls the spider's behavior by injecting venom, which reaches the brain and thus changes its behavior. And so the spider is not dead, just completely possessed by a parasite. It keeps netting its web, but now it does so to build a cocoon for the larva with a precision that is mind-blowing. The larva even compels the spider to build a web that will reflect ultraviolet light so it'll warn off birds or other predators. Scientists have also noticed that the webs the spiders build for the larva are 40 times stronger than the ones they usually do, so they can last longer until the wasp is fully grown. That poor spider literally becomes a zombie slave. Once the web is done exactly as the larva wants it, guess what? It eats the poor spider alive. Number 10. Myrmaconema Neotropicum the Myrmaconema neotropicum is a parasite that infects tropical ants, and by doing so, they're capable of completely controlling the ant's behavior and even its appearance. When the ant is not infected, it is completely black from head to, well, legs. But when the parasite infects them, their abdomen becomes bright red in color, which means that the poor ant isn't really camouflaged anymore and therefore becomes more vulnerable to predators. The newly red abdomen looks like a yummy seed to a hungry bird, for example. And not only that, but the infected ant starts walking around, rising the red abdomen, almost presenting it to predators like a beacon of light. And also, the Myrmaconema neotropicum somehow commands the ant to go to higher ground, like climbing a tree, almost diabolically driving it to suicide. It's quite macabre. Scientists believe that the parasite does all of that because it wants to be eaten by a bird. The ant is merely a means to an end. Because when it gets ingested by a bird, the parasite doesn't die, rather it stays there and reproduces. The eggs then exit the bird with its excrements and thus reaching a greater range for the parasite. Number 9. Brain Worm Brain worms are absolutely terrifying. They're exactly what their name suggests. A worm that lives inside an animal's brains. This is straight up out of a horror zombie movie of the worst kind, because everything is a true story. The brain worm usually infects deer, and in the case of an infected deer, not much happens. Basically, this worm can live inside a deer, and then it keeps doing whatever they want to do with no issues whatsoever. But when a brain worm infects a moose, 
that's a completely different story. Because the worm is used to the deer anatomy, it'll assume it's inside one, but it isn't. And that's how it ends up in the poor moose's brain, causing massive neurological irreparable damage. The moose basically becomes a completely stupefied zombie, and eventually it dies a horrific death. Some moose have been seen compulsively walking around in a circle non-stop for days. Others start losing motor skills and start falling on the ground again and again. They eventually forget how to eat, how to seek shelter, and then they die. It is a horrible and diabolical sight. Let's just hope that this worm never develops a taste for human brain. Imagine the disaster it would make. Number 8. Zombie Snails Portugal is the home of one of the most savage parasite worms in the world. They basically infect snails and then turn them into full zombie mode. When the snail is unlucky enough to eat the parasite's eggs, they then take over completely, possessing the snail and making it follow its every wish. You can even see the worm through the snail's skin. It is absolutely horrific. The worm then lodges itself inside the snail's tentacles. They've evolved to look like a very appetizing looking maggot. Well, appetizing for a bird, at least. The worm then commands the snail to climb to the tallest planet it can find in the middle of the day, something that the snail would never do because of the danger it poses of being eaten by a bird. That's why snails are mostly nocturnal creatures, but that is exactly what the parasite wants. It wants to be eaten because it can only multiply inside the bird's gut, and then it completes the cycle. The eggs are pooped by the bird, releasing a brand new batch of mind-controlling worms. The bird's poop is then eaten by the snail, which gets infected, and everything happens again and again in a diabolical and eternal circle of life. Number 7. Baculovirus, the Zombie Virus in these times of global pandemics, we're all a little skittish about viruses. What if I told you there's a virus that can turn its host into a completely absent-minded zombie? Now that's, if possible, even scarier than coronavirus. The virus in question is called the baculovirus, and don't worry, it mainly infects caterpillars. But it is a very unique, scary, and particular virus, as it manages to control the host and, by consequence, changing its behavior. Caterpillars try to avoid high and exposed branches, because if they're exposed, they become vulnerable to all sorts of natural predators that will quickly come and eat them, so they prefer lower, more covered areas where they can easily camouflage themselves. But when they contract the Bacula virus, they suddenly feel compelled to climb to the tallest branch they can find and just wait there. Eventually, this diabolical virus will literally liquefy the caterpillar, causing a horrible and untimely death. And the worst part is, this virus is extremely contagious, so all the caterpillars that are nearby will, without a doubt, get infected. And eventually, these caterpillars will also find themselves mind-controlled and compelled to climb. Scientists believe that the virus makes its host behave this way to increase the possibility of further infection of other caterpillars. It's the virus's survival skill. Number 6. Forid Flies That Create Zombie Ants Forward flies don't just create zombie ants, they also decapitate them from inside the ant's own bodies. It all starts with an adult forehead fly that targets one ant and injects it with one single egg. It does this with her ovipositor, which is like an organic hypodermic needle. Basically, it's a flying syringe. Eventually, the egg hatches and the maggot manages to make its way to the ant's brain. There, it lives off bodily fluids for a few weeks. It doesn't take long for the maggot to have full control over the ant's mind. But the curious thing about ants is that when they notice one of them is acting strange, they assume it's infected with a parasite, so they exile them. 
but that's not the case with the forid fly maggot. This parasite doesn't command the ant to behave in any strange way, because it needs the ant to keep having access to lots of food. And that is, up until the maggot is ready to go out into the world on its own. At that moment, it commands the ant to go somewhere with high humidity, which is the environment it needs. There, the larva secretes a chemical that dissolves the ant's membrane that holds its head, and it then eats the ant's brain and starts pupating. Finally, a few weeks later, another demonic forid fly is on the loose. Number 5. Chronic Wasting Disease Chronic wasting disease affects elk, deer, and moose. Its incubation time is extremely long, about 24 months, and the affected only show symptoms at the very end of the disease cycle. That is dangerous because CWD is extremely contagious, and it can easily wipe out an entire group of animals without effort. The situation's gotten so bad that they're calling it an epidemic of the deer family animals. In some places like Wyoming, it's cutting their population population down to half. What chronic waste disease does is it basically pokes holes in the animal's brain. As a consequence, they'll lose their motor skills and they become lethargic and depressed. They become extremely skinny, so much so you can actually see their ribs. It's not an easy thing to see. It also seems that they lose their sense of awareness, like if they didn't know where they are. But this disease is not just dangerous for the animals of the deer family, it's also dangerous to us. If you enjoy hunting, be careful, because CWD has no cure yet, and if you feed your family with the meat of an infected animal, everyone can die a slow, horrific death. As of this moment, CWD can be found in 21 states of the USA. Number 4. Canine Distemper Canine distemper has been dubbed the zombie virus, and it can be lethal for many house pets. It's a viral disease that affects a very large variety of mammal families. You can tell when an animal's been infected because they display abnormal neurological signs. It is airborne and extremely contagious. It mainly affects the gastrointestinal and respiratory systems, the spinal cord, and the brain. The sick animals also present high fever, eye inflammation, eye and nose discharge, vomiting and diarrhea, loss of appetite, and lethargy. If you live in an area where the virus is thriving and you have a pet, you would be wise to get it vaccinated, because death of canine distemper is slow, painful, and just a horrible way to go. It's called the zombie virus because of the neurological damage that can cause involuntary muscle twitches and incontinence, which means they can't control their bowels anymore. They can be seen just walking in circles non-stop because they are extremely disoriented. Eventually, the animal starts having violent seizures and when they start convulsing, there's not much to be done anymore. Even the lucky ones that manage to survive have everlasting muscle tics, and some remain having the hardened paw symptom, which can be extremely dangerous even when the virus is completely gone. This disease doesn't affect humans, but it does affect our pets, so be careful. Number 3. Zombie Ladybug we all love ladybugs. They're so beautiful. But did you know they can become zombies? A very diabolical species of wasp is behind it. And here's how it does it. The wasp manages to inject a ladybug with one of her eggs, which will live inside the bug for three weeks, eating away at her internal organs, but keeping her alive. Amazingly, the egg also infects the ladybug with a made-to-custom virus, specifically created for controlling the bug's mind. It is literally neurological warfare, but it gets freakier. Once the wasp larva is ready to make her cocoon, it exits the bug through its abdomen, and it will then start building the cocoon in between the poor ladybug's legs, keeping it from moving, somewhat of a zombie security guard of sorts. 
That's when the mysterious virus takes over the ladybug's mind, suppressing its need to run away. They're basically brainwashed into taking care of the wasp's larva. You could say they become a coerced babysitter. Finally, a week later, a fully grown wasp will come out of the cocoon, leaving the confused but healthy ladybug behind. Some ladybugs even get infected with the same parasite several times during their lives. Number 2. Zombie Crab This is a very curious parasite, the Rhizocephalin, Google was no help, that can change its host's gender. They are barnacles that infect mainly crabs, and when they do so, if their host is a male, they simply castrate them and suppress their reproductive system. The absence of male hormones then starts changing the crab's behavior, showing signs of female conduct. The reason it does this is for giving its eggs a better chance of finding another crab to infect. Because guess what? The female crabs attract the male ones effortlessly, just by simply standing there. Imagine something invading your body and changing your gender without asking your permission. That's the stuff of nightmares. So basically, the parasite's next victim will come willingly, thinking they found to mate but boy are they in over their heads. When the parasite takes a hold of an unsuspecting crab, it sends roots into it, drawing from the nutrients the crab needs to survive. That's when the crab becomes zombified. They start behaving extremely strangely, falling over and walking in circles aimlessly. The crabs have not yet evolved to defend themselves against this parasite, which means the barnacle is winning the battle. The curious fact about this parasite, though, is that when it infects a male crab, crab, the mortality rate is 100%, but when it infects a female crab, they survive perfectly well and can just go about their business. Number 1. Rabies if you're scared of vampires or werewolves, it might be upsetting for you to hear that both mythological creatures have almost everything in common with a very real virus. Rabies. It affects all kinds of animals, including us. And if it's not treated properly and quickly, it is extremely deadly. And to be honest, it's a horrible way to go. When someone contracts rabies, the symptoms are terrifying, the stuff of nightmares. They can get hallucinations, dizziness, and violent muscle spasms. They can also become delirious. They start drooling and secrete white foam from their mouth. The virus is mainly transmitted from saliva, and it can be transmitted from one species to another. So exactly like in the werewolf myth, if a dog with rabies bites you, you'll get it too. But the most terrifying symptom of this disease is that it induces an extreme state of aggression, violence, confusion, and agitation. You basically become an uncontrollable zombie. It is a very dangerous virus, although the first symptoms are very similar to those of the flu. But it doesn't take long for it to reach the brain, where it multiplies and creates all the horrible symptoms we just discussed. As you can see, you don't need to go to a movie to see zombies. They are very real, and some are dangerous for us, too. If you could choose one of these 15 things to be made into a movie, which one would you choose? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!